Hello and welcome to a new video about measurements. This time we want to deal with our random errors. Okay? Last time we talked about uh, several things, uh, what parts of so on, but this is all for, for the errors, systematic errors or errors which I can ha somehow calibrate. Uh, what calibrating is, we have also talked about this and so on. Yeah, And now what is left is, you know, these random errors that our measurement values differ from the real value hmm, by luck, hmm, by somehow. How can I deal with this? Yeah, How can I deal... How... How can I minimize the error I make there? Well, the thing of choice is I don't measure once, I measure several times. Hmm? Because then we said there is no there is no uh, direction, there's no sign of the error, and it's just randomly distributed around an average value, around a mean value. And this is exactly what we are going to do. We are not measuring once, we are measuring more often. Huh? Here huh? I've drawn a little bit, yeah? so we are measuring and we are now dividing, this is the measured value here, yeah? measured value, and we are dividing our measured values in classes. Yeah? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we will produce here such classes, right? And whenever our our value is within a class, I say, okay, I count it here. So these are the, the classes, categories, classes. Whenever my measured value is somewhere within here, I count it for this class. And then I can draw how often in which class I have received I've received a, a value. Just finish this. All right, here are my classes. And now I start to measure. All right, I start to measure. Uh, Then I get I get values, all right? So here maybe I have that much value, here that much, here that much, 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 that much. Yeah, so here we have somehow those error classes filled up to a certain amount. Yeah? Of course, the further away from, from the average value, yeah, the, less, the less elements I would get. Okay? Clear. And out of this distribution, I can tell somehow how good is the measurement or is this okay or something like this. Yeah? So let's talk about this statistic statistic values. Well, there is the mean value, okay? How to calculate the mean value? I have a, a series of measurements, yeah, xi. Here this is x, the measurement, okay? Xi. This is X, of course. 
Yeah, this is the count. This is XI. Yeah, and to summarize all the results I've got, yeah, from one to n, yeah, I summarize this, yeah? and then I divide by the count of how many samples I've done. Yeah? If we do a lot of samples, then this this curve would approximate the so-called Gaussian curve. A uh, normal curve, uh, which looks like somehow like that. Uh. Glocken curve, bell curve, it's sometimes called. Uh. It's symmetrical, of course. This is called normal distribution. And here we have our mean value x over line. This is the mean value here. And around this mean value, my, my uh, elements are distributed. Okay? If the mean value and the expected value have a difference, yeah, then this might, then you re either really have a difference, yeah, or it might give a hint that there is some underlying uh, systematic error okay? with some sign and value and so on, and you could compensate this. Yeah? If the mean value and the expected value fit together, then you're fine. Yeah. Mean value, building the mean value. Of course, it is important how broad these things here are, right? Yeah, because, you know, if I measure a table and I get, I don't know, 1,500 one millimeter, 1,500 and a half millimeter, 1,500, 1,500 and a half millimeter, if this, and if, if I get 1,400 millimeters, 1,500 millimeters, then it's different. Yeah? So somehow I need to, to manage to find how far how good is the measurement? How accurate is the measurement? Yeah? And there are so-called standard deviations. Okay, standard deviation. The usual formula for standard deviation sigma is the square root of the sum 1 to n again yeah, of the actual measured value minus the mean value yeah, squared. So larger differences have more influence and then I divide by the count of measurements. Yeah. This is the typical standard deviation. Okay. If we would have this Gaussian curve, yeah, then we would have within plus minus sigma uh, here, if we have sigma sigma plus minus sigma, we would have around 60 plus minus sigma, we would have uh, 68 to 3 percent of all measurements, yeah, plus minus 2 sigma, yeah? we would have already 95 to 5 percent of the measurements, and plus minus 3 sigma, we would have 99 to 7 percent. So within the range of three sigmas, we have almost all measurements inside. Yeah? This is the sigma. This is if I really do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of measurements, yeah? Because with a lot, a lot, a lot of measurements, I can be sure that this mean value is correct. This is the issue, yeah? The mean value, if I do, you know, some measurements, yeah? Let's say 90 is enough, enough, yeah? Around 90, yeah? Then 
I have to use a different formula. Yeah? Then I have to use this S yeah? equals here everything is the same. Yeah? I 1 to n xi minus x square x the mean average value. And since I'm not sure if this average value is correct, I do a correction. I'm not dividing by n but by n minus 1. Alright? This is a substitution for this. If you know if you don't know the mean value exactly, yeah, this is it's called Bessel correction. Yeah, so this is a correction a little bit which brings this estimated value of sigma closer to the real sigma. That's it. Yeah. So this this is the the variance if n is small. and x square uncertain. And here for large ends. In reality, you now to get a good good mean value, usually an, an n around 90. Yeah. Is sufficient. Then we could use this. If we are smaller, we have to use this standard deviation. Yeah. And so, with the help of statistics, I can reach an average value. I can reach a mean value, which I'm using as a substitute for my measurement. This is with n bigger than 90 correct and how good the measurement is I can see in the standard deviation. Okay. These are the these are the things uh, if you ever stumble about stumble about them then you know now know what is behind statistics of error. Good Now I think we handled the measurement errors pretty full content, let's say. Well, we measured a measurement error check. Yeah, We know how a measurement system works, we know the dynamic behavior, we know the static behavior, we know how to deal with errors and so on. And now we have a valid measurement. And this measurement, we don't want to keep this measurement to ourselves. Yeah? We want to share it, share it with the world. Yeah? So we have to somehow transfer measurements. Yeah? So I have to somehow transfer my measurement signal. What possibilities there are and how this might be handled, we will see in the next video. Okay? So next video, transferring measurement signals, signal parameters. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.